Okay, so let's talk about disease prevention. Uh, these are, th to me, this is it. I'm pretty much, if you're going to have a healthy flock, this will take care of 99% of just about everything except for wounds uh, from predators. Like clean water, uh, the most nutritious feed and not the cheapest, mm -hmm. clean environment, space, and not stress. So we're going to talk about each of these just, just briefly. Essentially here. There's only so much I can pack into an hour. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Harvey had a very similar thing to this. Clean water to me is an absolutely non-negotiable when it comes to my lifestyle. And I tell myself, that sometimes I'll do that, I'll be in a hurry and I'll sort of go through my chores and I'll look at that and say, would I drink that water? And if I wouldn't drink that water if I were really thirsty, then I haven't done my job. I'll go and I'll fall back and I'll clean it up and make sure that they've got clean water. If you don't have, if you keep drinking water or don't keep enough water, it's just a recipe and a prescription for, for old sick birds. That's it. So to me, uh, that's, and that's why I love these field waters. This is, like, like I already had, it's just a bucket with a, with a stock tank float. Here's the hose coming on. I can only use it in, in the non-freezing times. And then, of course, you see this little Y thing there. That's so I can run a drip hose off to the garden else, elsewhere. And see this little, little piece of wood there? We got beehives, so without that little piece of wood, bees burn out. So that's the bee folks. And it's, it's raised here because of the deep mulch system on a little, little thing, a little uh, platform. But if this were on pasture, like you'll see later, there's no need to really raise it up. And so it's pretty easy for me to move this around. Uh, you could have a couple hundred feet of houses. It's, it's not a problem at all. And when we had the, uh, the poultry rank, the poultry <coughs> rank, we, we had these all over the place. Next place. So feed, again, the most nutritious feed, not, not the cheapest. Um, this is just some, 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 these are additives. I'm not going to go, don't have time to go into additives. But, but if you get them in bags, keep them up off the, the gravel floor. Water will wick up, and then they'll get molded. Uh, then you can also, I like the cans because rats or mice can't chew over that, and it really keeps every, everything up. Um, meaning, meaning but raccoons can sometimes have like, trouble getting in there as well. So you want to keep your feet high and dry. You want to keep it free from predators. Uh, keep your keep your supplements if you use any. Now, some of these supplements you can raise on your own. I mean, it's, it does, it does all poultry feed have to come from bags? Does all eggs come from gardens? Or does all milk come? But the answer is no. There's a lot that you can do to raise food for your, for your flock. And of course, we've got a garden with and four chickens workshop too. I mean, we've got uh, 20 workshops now. Identified, two hour workshops to see proteins and things. Uh, but next slide. So, so here's here's the here's the stress part. I mean, don't you? Didn't your heart rate just go down even looking at that picture? Aww. I mean, the, this is these hens were naturally incubated under the hen, and they're being naturally brooded, and they've got clover there. They've got, I mean, no pasty butt, no problems with health. There's absolutely no trouble at all. Every now and then, a chick will hatch out that just doesn't seem to have a little bit. I'm sure it's sure everyone's seen that, and. and it seems like those little chicks, no matter what you do, they're just not never pretty. Haven't you found that? There's just a few. But, but if you can get them past three days, and then they're, 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 the mortality is zero, pretty much, except, except for some predators. So here's another problem, not stress. This is a little Polish, and you can see his little hairdo there. That's, uh, <laughs> and this is, this is, now this, this little hen, this was a, a rescue chicken. It was, uh, <clears throat> was not used to being handled. This is Lisa Dearden, my, my uh, partner with some of these workshops. And, and I was telling about some chicken handling things. So we went out and we found out the little, little guy was just as friendly because we didn't chase it, we didn't grab it, we didn't yell at it, we didn't drive corner. We just went over and just you know, we picked it up. And it decided to go up on her shoulder. And, and, uh, so they, and one of the things I want to say about the Polish is, is because of these hot hats, uh, hot hats here, they cannot expel heat the way uh, a single comb or a big, big comb chicken can. So if you do choose to get Polish, especially here in North Carolina, they can die of heat stroke pretty fast. And the other thing with special health care with these birds, and they're very popular, that's what they're going into, is they can get mites or lice up in that, that little top crown, and you have to take special measures to be sure to get it out. There are even special bands that you can put on so you can put their clothes back. So that's just something to consider about the Polish. The other thing that's interesting is chickens like soft music. There was a study in Thailand and in Australia that was doing piped in music to their flocks and they found they gained weight faster, they laid better. I mean, the production really went up quite nicely. And there, there's a company now that's been formed um, that is providing those services and selecting those kind of music. Sometimes I'll put my little boom box out there with my little iPad -I -I docking station. And I can tell the chickens like Brahms and, and this class, I like classics like that. But they also like rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 
Now, one of the things if you're, you're treating a chicken, first off, I can honestly say I've never treated my entire flock, not once, it, unless it's for a warmer that is in the winter. That's the only time, and that's that's for the <coughs> But usually, I will go treat individuals. Now, if you all here were sick, would you all go and do the same medication for the same thing? No. You know, we treat individuals, and if we have a whole classroom of kids, and one of them comes down with virus, do we treat the whole all the kids in the classroom? No. We can't. no. So what I do is I treat the individual, but I want to make sure I know which individual I'm talking about. So that's why I'm big into leg bands. And there are three different kinds. Of you can see one, 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 is, one is for the uh, year. I put a band on for uh, what year they were born, so at least I know how old the chicken is. Because after they get a while, I can't tell them apart. Uh, so I'm especially the same breed. And then, then these are, uh, there'll be a band if they've been broody and another band if I want to identify them. So that's just one way that I, I can track the, who I'm treating. Another way, if you're not sure, and then they're not black osteoporosis, is take a magic mark and put a mark on their head. And that makes them easier to identify. Same thing with little chicks. That's another way. If I notice one, one for some reason gets pasty, but I'll put a marker or some sort of color on their back. And then I, when I'm scanning for them, I can say, oh, you, oh you're okay now. <laughs> okay. So the immune system support, this is what's often not, not considered. Uh, you know, for yourself, as well as for chickens, that over 70% of your T cells are formed in your immune system. If you don't have a healthy digestive system, you're, not, you're going to have allergies, asthma, all those autoimmune diseases. And are we not in the decade of the autoimmune diseases? Who here besides me has no allergies? Well, that, that's a lot. That's a lot. That, that's probably, what, a quarter, maybe, of the group? That's as much as I've ever seen. <coughs> so anyway, oh, uh, if you're taking these proton pump inhibitors, you know, the, the, the Prilosec, or the, I mean, it, it's, it, there's a whole thing about having the right foods in your, and feeding your flora and fauna in your digestive system. You know, you've got something like 3 trillion bacteria in you, more than you have cells in your body. You are a walking ecosystem. You're literally a biological phenomenon. And if you don't treat those guys right, if you don't treat, get the right bacteria in there and the right flora and the right fauna, they're going to throw you off the ship. I mean, basically, you're not going to be healthy. Same thing's true with the chicken. And that's why when Harvey is talking about that commercial feed, uh, it's true that commercial feed is pretty much, for the most part, the cheapest, not necessarily the most nutritious. And I've seen, I've seen uh, more health problems if you just feed straight commercial feed than, than, uh, than if you're out of those things. So I would have to give it some other way. So, so the, the GI tract is incredibly important. Uh, next slide. Now, here's the reason why it's so important to have the GI tract. And I'm talking for you as well as the chickens here. Uh, overloaded toxins. I mean, sometimes uh, you have moldy feed, for example, or you have a lot of preservatives in the feed, uh, food feed, food. Uh, if you have an infestation of parasites, that can whack a chicken out. If I can't figure out what's wrong with the brood, it's like you're just, God, what is it with her? I'll, I'll, I'll worm them. And usually within the next day or two, they're fine. Then I go, ah, so I need to really be on the lookout for, for a woman that it might not be. Usually, well, I'm talking about parasites a little bit more, but usually chickens are pretty warm tolerant lifetime. Uh, have you found that, uh, Jim? And, and I, I've known flocks that haven't been born for forever, in a sense. How about Harvey, where are you? Are you? Yeah, have you, have you found that chickens are pretty warm tolerant? Uh, yeah, I, I, I never warm them. I don't have a problem. We're still going to talk about these later. You, 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 <coughs> And, yeah, okay, so there we go. Okay, so the overgrowth of bad bacteria or fungus, that's a, that's a problem. Now, in people, what causes that overgrowth is having too acidic a system. We eat too much acidic foods. And those acidic foods can be sugar, highly refined uh, starches, soft drinks, even coffee, sorry. But what happens is when, you, when your systemic pH drops, it's just like the terrain flourishes for the bad bacteria to grow. And, an example might be, um, Say I have some corn here, you know, or bad bacteria, but say, I'm just going to use an example of corn. If I have corn and I put it out there and it's raining and the grass is going through and, and I've got a nice little field, do you think that corn's going to grow? It will grow because the terrain's right. It will grow beautifully because the terrain's right. If I take that same corn and I put it here, is that ever going to grow? It'll never grow. And the same thing's true with your system. If you've got your body and system with the pH with its minerals, you're not going to get sick because it simply can't grow. That's, and that's a whole thing that was picked, brought about by, by uh, Bouchon and uh, Pasteur. They had a big debate, and uh, as it turned out, Pasteur was wrong. 
and can't be candid on the doctor. He said, I just want to be that. That's another. So the, uh, you only get an overdose of these bacteria that come just from the, something is not in balance in the body system. And of course, not being able to absorb nutrients properly, this is a huge problem with people and probably a pretty big chick problem with some chickens. There are some chickens I just can't get to eat or to keep their food down, and something's not right with their jet track, and I can't figure it out. And usually they'll just kind of they'll be small and they'll try to grow them. Another, another problem with leaky guts that I suspect is with a lot of commercial animals. I mean, like, you're talking about they're, 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 they grow so fast, they're in pain, so they'll, they'll eat uh, these, uh, uh, what was you talking about? They'll eat anything, but it's even arsenic, kind of like snarko and arsenic. Yeah. They'll eat because it, it seems to help their pain in a way. Well, if you have a leaky gut, a leaky gut means that, that literally the digestive tract is, is quickly, and all these things that should not be in your blood system are flowed by in you. And your immune system that can't pump it, can't deal with it, or if it forms antibodies against it, and you get the allergies and the antibodies and all that stuff. Kind of I think this is true for a lot of our animals, and we'll talk about we're we'll talking about commercial and efficient commercial meats here. I'm interested in that.
Okay, now dust baths. Now hard to argue that we're going to finish this but this is my chicken. But I think dust baths are actually critical for the quality of the chicken's life. If they're going to express their chickenness and if they're going to really be happy and healthy, they need dust baths. This is a hen. She's got some uh, babies. We've actually ditched the babies to take a dust bath. Next one. So now she's doing the side of the Next slide. Now she's doing the back of the side. Now she's doing the other side. Next slide. And now she's really in the back. Yeah, and she is going to have to. Now, what, what, what she doesn't know is that in this dust bath is the night to make sure. Yeah, and so I'm going to say it's very light in the farm. Your chickens will get lots of rice. It just seems to happen. It's fine to you. But one, they're not good to what you do. You don't have to worry about you getting rice from your chickens. And then two, they're pretty easy to take care of. You might have to take care of your chickens.